Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside with Mac Daddy Pete Robertson. How are you doing today, Pete? Uh, I am blessed, highly favored, and I'm just very happy to be here. How about you? I am I am well. Yeah. Blessed and highly favored. I love it when people say that. Yeah. I remember the first time. Especially I, when they mean it. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard that. Someone came up to me and said, I'm blessed, I have a favorite. And I was like, what does that mean? And then so it made me think about it. And I was like, wow, that's really good. So what does it mean? Uh, well, you blessed, brought it up. Now you got to now you got to share. Blessed, I take it as well. Blessed because I'm saved by grace, right? So I'm blessed. I'm I'm a child of God, and then highly favored is because if God be for you, who can be against you? The Bible says. So highly favored is I'm I'm in favor. God's favor is upon me. I'm highly favored. He likes me. That should put a smile on your face. That should motivate you. It should motivate you. Nice segue. <laughs> I'm not quite ready for that segue yet, but I like it. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. That's right. On that's, the riotpodcast.co. Listeners, that's called foreshadowing. <laughs> for all, for all. <laughs> Speaking of foreshadowing, as people are listening to this podcast today, Pete, if they're you know getting it the day that it's released, you're in Monte Carlo. I, I am. How cool we're is leaving, that? We're leaving as of uh, tomorrow. But, but how about how before we get to that though, how cool was last week uh, getting to do our testimony? Oh, that that was fun. That yeah, was we fun. Haven't... I was a little like I didn't know where that was, how that was going to go, but that was that was a lot of fun. I mean, it was like at first I was like, why why do we do this? But there has been people wanting to know a little bit. about I mean, obviously we gave the you know the bird's eye ver- version the of it thirty thousand foot fit, view. Yeah, but I mean, it still gave a little bit about our, yeah. how God has transformed us and how He's changed us and, and got us to where we're at. But I hope you guys liked it. If you didn't hear our <laughs> last week's uh, show, listen to it. It was awesome. It was a little change because we've been doing the Colossians and we're going to do Colossians today, but we've been doing Colossians. So we broke it up a little bit and then we're going to break it up again next week. We have uh, Barry. Barry is going to be yeah. back on. Yeah. So that'll be fun. What's the name of that show? I have. I don't remember. Random Ramblings. Oh, Random Ramblings. Yeah, that's we, a cool name. I think the whole point of it kind of just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> my my daughter, I think, first coined that. Brianna, um, she came up with that word, so I've been using it. Thanks, Brianna. Um, but I think it's I, it's going to be fun because we're going to laugh a lot. I, it's just us, right? I mean, Barry, myself, you. We're just random isn't, or randoms. We're isn't have that a lot kind of, of how we started the show to begin with? Yeah. Right? It was just the three of us sitting around so, rambling. What was that? Righteous r- rambling? No, what was that? Righteous again? evasion of truth. Random <laughs> ramblings. <laughs> random ramblings. Get a tongue tied all kind the of like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Random ramblings. All right. So I will be. So if you're listening to this on Thursday, yes, we will be in Monte Carlo. So we're going to be doing. We're up. We're, we're staying in actually Nice right there on the French Riviera that day. Um, tomorrow, I mean, so today's we're recording. So the next day will be the first day we get there. We'll be in Rome and then we'll spend a few days in Rome and, and do all that stuff. Then we'll go to Florence and we'll spend a couple of days in Florence. Then we'll go up to Venice. And then from Venice, we're going to head over to Nice. So if you're listening to this, we're going to be in Monte Carlo and, and be just exploring that. I think that's, um, it makes me think of like James Bond or, like uh, what else? Like a like a Sean Connery or, or I, love something. It. I don't know. It's still James Bond. Yeah, Sean something. Connery was an awesome. Was James he in Monte Bond. Carlo though? I didn't know. I don't remember, but when I think of Monte Carlo, I think of James Bond. I don't know why. I, I always think like big luxury yachts and yeah. just right there on the French Riviera, all of that. Um, one thing I learned about French Riviera though, I was looking at um, the beaches there. There's not going to be much people on the beach because it's uh, going to be colder. But um, they're all rocks and pebbles. Who wants to do that? I don't know. We're just, we have such amazing beaches in Florida, in California. We're spoiled. Often. Yeah, I just thinking that's really cool. Well, anyway, the water's real pretty. And then after Nice and Monte Carlo, we're going to go to Paris for a couple of days. Oh, we're going to go to Disney. God, D- Disney that's Paris. right. We were just talking about Ratatouille. Yeah. And that's where the original Ratatouille started. And then they brought it to Epcot here in Orlando, Florida. Very fun. You yeah. know what you should do, Pete? Hmm. You should do a, like a short video clip from each of your stops and share it with the Riot Podcast fans. We plan, we're planning on doing something like that. We were going to get like this system um, that we didn't buy because it can cost like $400 um, to be able to record it like via our phone and it would have been a lot more higher quality. Um, but we'll still probably do something. I was planning on that. Uh, maybe do some devotionals while we're there. Maybe have some sort of the backdrops. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to that. And we can just post them up on the video. That'd be fun. Keep people unplugged in. Yeah. 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 The funny part is if you, if you do those videos ahead of time, 
they'll actually see those videos before they hear this podcast. Well, no, we'll probably wait and see. No, do it. <laughs> Reward the people that are watching. Or maybe it's just me. I want to see what's going on. Yeah, it was just my mom calls uh, called me up the other day. She goes, could you FaceTime me? And I was like, FaceTime me? What? She goes, yeah, at the locations, just FaceTime me. And I'm just thinking, okay. Um, so I started doing the time. We're about six hours ahead of me, and they're nine hours ahead of my mom because she's Oof. back in California. I was like, mom. Just post videos. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be on the same time frame. So, but we will try to do something like that with her and just bless her. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys have an amazing trip. You got two weeks of uh, exploring Italy, exploring France. And I think you guys will have an amazing time. I cannot wait to see the pictures and the videos and uh, a little bit jealous if I'm honest. Uh, but, yeah. you know, I had my chance. I could have gone. So I have no one to blame but myself. One day we'll, um, we'll be able to figure out how we can all just go to some of these places. I would think that it would be like a footstep to Paul tour would be kind of fun, maybe a Holy Land tour. Um, I mean, something like that. Yeah. I mean, Holy Land, if you guys are wanting to go to Holy Land, it's open now. So um, the, un the only negative to that is if you're not a vaccinated person and you're against the vaccination, then you would have to be vaccinated to go there. And if you had it for six months, you have to have the booster shot to actually go there. So Holy Land is locking down as far as who's That's allowed right. to come in. Israel's requiring the booster? Yeah. Wow. If you have, if you've had it six months ago, yeah, they are. And then, but the, but the Turkey footsteps of Paul Turkey is wide open. That one you can get in. Um, you just have a COVID-19 test uh, before you go. You don't have to be vaccinated. Um, same with the footsteps of Paul Greece tour. You don't have to. So those are all open. I mean, pretty much all of Europe's open. So anybody wants to go. There you go. You well, know. you deal with a lot of travel. You think this COVID stuff's ever going to end or is this just part of our lives forevermore? Everything that we read from the travel industry is that everybody is over it and they want everything back to normal. That's what they say. So the travel industry is so big. I'm hoping that they have at least some say in this, but the governments are a whole different story. I have no idea. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Is there a conspiracy in this? I don't know. Oh, that, that would be a different show altogether. Should we do a conspiracy show, people? <laughs> we, we do the, the, the teachers' unions versus the travel, tur the travel agencies. <laughs> Who will win the mighty battle? Oh, Lord help us. Right. All right. What are we talking about today? Um, bobblehead dolls. Oh, my gosh. We got to get one. <laughs> we keep talking about this every week. I so want one. We're going to have to do that. You know, if anybody's out there that's listening to this and you have connection to Baba Head, or if you just want to do it for us and send us some, we'll send you the artwork. We have it already done. We have our bobblehead artwork on our wall right now. And um, if you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube, if, if you look on Bob's left shoulder, you'll see our bobblehead sitting there. And uh, there they are. Bob's showing them on YouTube. So those are our bobbleheads. So we have our, our cool 70s vibe going. We have our green and orange and purple and and uh, we're just rocking it. So Barry with his purple pants on. Yeah, it's hilarious. That is pretty funny. That is pretty. What are we going to talk about today? Um, well, the title today is going to be uh, Motivations to Living Your Best Life Now. And, uh, and the way that we came up with that was just thinking, you know, what motivates me to serve God every day? What motivates us to get up and to live for Him? And so I think Paul kind of breaks that down in, in, our, more, in our reading in Colossians. Um, if you guys are reading along with us, um, we're going to read out of the ESV version. Many people ask what version you're reading out of. Well, it's the ESV. And we're going to be covering Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. And so if you want to just open that up and read along with us, we'll get there. But before we do that, why don't we pray and, yes. and get going? Bobby, you want to pray for us? Yeah, absolutely. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for this podcast. We thank you for our listeners uh, who are in, hopefully enjoying what they're hearing, Lord. Uh, I just pray that you use this show to speak to them, to touch them, draw them closer to you. Father, as we, uh, as we talk about uh, Colossians 3 today, we'd... Uh, just everything we say and uh, read and and discuss just bring you glory so father be with our listeners today uh, be with the show in jesus name amen amen all right so opening statement pete in other in today's readings we see paul completing his exhortation to the christians to live a holy life he uses the illustration again of garments to put off and to put on in episode 46 how to break free from your past we covered what paul told his readers to put off he called them the grave clothes of sin, the old life. In today's reading, Paul is sharing with his readers what to put on in order to have a new life in Christ. 
Today, we will unpack four motives to be encouraged by that will help us walk in the promise of new life. Colossians 3, uh, 12 through 17, put, then, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with, thank with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give them to God the Father through Him. Wow, man! It's um, every time I read this, it's I, I read the scriptures, and Paul in the book of Colossians has so many nuggets, and there's so much depth here, and I just can't wait to just unpack this. You know, we'll pat, we'll just break this down as we go through this. But before I do that, let me just kind of paint this picture, and I was just sharing with you what's going on here. So. Our, the title is Motivations to Living Your Best Life Now. And so uh, just imagine this. And let me just, let me just put this in context or, or put it in, in perspective. So I shared this with our life group uh, this past week. And one of the things that I talked about was just imagine if you were born a royal. So like you're in Great Britain and um, you were born into the royal family. You would be you would expect be expected to to do, live a little bit differently. You would you know you would dress differently. You would walk differently. There would you would be trained to do royal things. You would have royal responsibilities, and all of that. And and what happens? And the way that I look at this is the what happens when we give our life to Jesus is that we become transformed. We talked about this I think three episodes. We become transferred from one kingdom to another. And so before Christ, before God, we were living outside of the royal family. But when we gave our lives to Jesus, we were now transferred. We now been given the royal seal. We've now been adopted or draft grafted into the royal family. We now have the benefits of the royal family. We now have authority of the royal family. We now have, you know, everything that's that's within the royal family. And, and when we go into the royal family, we don't go in changed. We go in as we are. So is, is minute that you've been given your life to Jesus, you then are then uh, brought into the family and you still have a lot of your old garments, your old clothing there. And so what Paul is talking about here is that before he says, well, your old garments you have, but you were to put those off. And we talked about some of the old garments last week where they were, you know, some of the greed, the past passions of lust, the, um, you know, the anxiety for, for self, uh, you know, to fulfill the self and, you know, all of that. And then this week we're to put on the new clothes. And so as a Royal, you have an, uh, you have a duty, you have a responsibility. You're, you're representing the kingdom. You're representing the King and, and you're to act and do certain things. And so Paul is just encouraging the, the church of Colossae is he's just letting them know that, hey, I understand that God accepts you for who you are. You don't have to change. You don't have to do anything. God's the one that does that. But he wants to give you now all of this new garments. He wants to give you these new qualities. He wants to enhance your life. He wants to bless your life. He wants you to, to represent him. He wants you to look the part. And so that's what Paul's doing. He's he's letting them know that, hey, you you you. It's not good to live in the old garments. It's not good to live the way that you used to. You are now changed. You're now benefit. You now have the the royalty. And so I'll, I'm going to share a little bit of that as we go through. I'll share a little bit of of that you know as our analogy as we break this down of of kind of what Paul is doing here. So our first motivation is what Bob. It is, uh, Paul gives us, it's grace to have in Christ, the grace that we have in Christ. Sorry, I was, I was really listening to you, Pete. And you know, the thing that struck me was, um, 
we don't need to change to come into the kingdom. No, that's the part that I kept. It just yeah. kept going around in my mind. So sorry, I was just distracted. Yeah, we're, we'll talk about the door and how the kingdom, how the really kingdom good. thrives later. But but yeah, the first motivation is, is that grace. So it's the grace we have in Christ. So I wake up. So again, so look at it this way. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm pinching myself because I'm saying, "Hey, I'm a royal today." Right. That's good. You know, first Peter talks about that. We're a royal priesthood, a perfect saint. We we you know, it talks about in John that we're grafted in. We're now, you know, we're part of the vine, right? And so I wake up this morning and I'm like, What? I'm I'm a royal, you know? Oh my gosh, you know, that's amazing. So but in order for me to be a royal, I have to have God's grace. In 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 Revelations three twenty it says that I stand at the door and I knock. Those that open the door and let me in, they can have fellowship with me. And so in this kingdom, in this royal kingdom, there is a door. And, and at that door is Jesus. And everything that Jesus did, there is a door. And, and God is coming to you and he's knocking on your heart or your door. And he's saying, listen, if you open that door to me, if you accept me into your heart as your Lord and person, your Savior, if you live for me, I will allow you into this kingdom. And it's not anything that you've done. It, you're, you're coming broken, as you just said. You're coming ugly. You're coming in, in a state of mind that is not pleasing to him. It's a sinful state. But God says that you can come in. I'm, I'm going to allow you in. I'm going to give you all the benefits of the royalty, royalness. It, but, and that is called God's grace. And so when I wake up, now that I know that I've been given this, I'm pumped up. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that motivates me to want to live for him today. Because why would I want to be live in a non-royal state? Why would I go back when I get so much more in being a royal? And so that's kind of what it is. So let's just read to, uh, verses 12 through 14, unpack what that's saying about God's grace. What, what does it give us? And we're motivated by his grace because it gives us so much more than our old way. So go ahead. Okay, starting again at verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen one, chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint with a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Yeah. So without being chosen. So the first part we're seeing here is, is that we were chosen. So let's break that down a little bit. So God already knew ahead of time, the Bible says predestined in Romans, he talks about that, but he says that he already knew ahead of time whom will call his name, who will open that door. He knew this. And so he's the perfect king. He's God almighty. He's the author and finish of our life. He knows everything. And so God has chosen you. So if you're listening to this podcast or you have a tugging of your heart to, to live a, a life that's pleasing to God or a live as a royal, that means that God has chosen you. He is taking you out of the world. He's taking you out of, out of death. He's taking you away from sin. He's taking you out of hell. And he's now put new garments on you. He's now given you a new life. He's now given you the opportunity to have eternal life with him and so forth. So it's talking about being chosen. So without being chosen by God first, we would never have been given the opportunity to be forgiven by God. And so if God didn't choose us, we would never be forgiven by God. Paul is telling the Colossi church they were chosen and forgiven, and that is God's unmerited grace. Because they were able to get in through that door, God says, I chose you. I knew you were going to come ahead of time, but you've accepted my free gift of salvation. And now that grace, you're able to come into his kingdom. You were given this opportunity because God loves you. And it has nothing to do with your efforts that we just talked about. Paul is saying because of what Christ did, we should be motivated to live a holy, compassionate, kind life. And he's saying because of what God did, because of that grace, your old garment is stinky. Your old garment produces wrath. Your old garment produces, you know, anxiety. It, it, it produces depression. It, dep it, it produces mood swings. It, all of those things that come from the old garments and, and, and you know, and also like hopelessness. Um, it, it produces like, you know, anxiety where you just don't, can't figure out life, a lot of heartache, 
Um, there's a lot of torment in that. In the new garments, and it, which is the grace that is given to us, that produces everything that is fulfilling, which is good, which is perfect, which is complete, which is uh, above reproach. And so that's kind of what Paul's talking about. So do you want to break down God chose them a little bit? Do you see that, the word chosen? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The word chosen, God, means elect and to be set apart. The same meaning was given to the Israelites. In Deuteronomy 7, 7 through 8, it says, It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loves you and is keeping uh, the oath that he swore to your fathers. The Lord has brought you out of a mighty land and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. It's kind of cool. So again, so he's saying that the Israelites, remember the Israelites were chosen. So the Israelites were in Egypt. They were the Egypt as associated with the world. And um, <clears throat> so they were outside of the kingdom. And God wanted to bring them to Israel, Jerusalem, which was the kingdom. And so he's basically telling them that I chose you. You weren't, it wasn't because you were great and mighty. You weren't the biggest army. I chose you despite of that. I just wanted to prove that I am God. And he wanted to pour out into them his spirit. He wanted to give them divine order. He wanted to protect them and good for the, so the whole world can know that they are God. And so the same thing goes with us. He's not looking for all the, the gr people that have it all together. The Bible says, I did not come for the well. I came for the sick. I came from the people that I came for the people that realize I've screwed this life up. I've, I've messed it up. I've tried everything to fix it and I can't fix it. He came for those people. And, and it's the same thing as the Israelites. It's not, he's not looking for the wealth. He's not looking for your skill set, your gifts, your talent. He's just looking for your heart. And he's saying, listen, if you if you recognize that your life isn't going the way that it's supposed to go, I'm here for you. I want I, I have chosen you. I know this. I'm I want to set you apart. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing. You know, R.C. RC Spro said, before a person can make a choice that is pleasing to God, he must first have a desire to please God. You have to have a desire. Before we can find God, we must first desire to seek him. Before we can choose to do the good, we must first have a desire for the good. Before we can choose Christ, we must first have a desire for Christ. The sum and the substance of the whole debate of predestination rests squarely at this point. Does fallen man in and of himself have a natural desire for Christ? And if you have a desire for Christ, and if you have a purpose uh, in your life to want to seek him, that means that God has called you. If that is on your heart, if that is a tug that's in your in your in your spirit, that means you were called. This verse is talking to you. Whoever's listening to this, that's what it's saying. You know what I was thinking? Is you're saying that you, you're you're saying you had to think of it about it first. You had to almost put it in your mind first. It sounds like what James was telling us about sin, right? The opposite. It, like first you thought about it before it developed and became. So this is almost like 180 degrees the other way, right? But you still, it has to come into your mind before it, it, you live it out, for lack of a better word. I mean, First Timothy 2, 4 says, Who desires, God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So it's not that God's not saying that he doesn't desire every man to come. It's not that he hasn't chosen them. It's just they have not chosen to come. They have not decided to surrender their life. They haven't, they heard the truth, but they didn't accept the truth. That's but, funny. I'm glad you went there because the first thing I think of when, when you're saying chosen or predestined, I'm like, well, does that mean there's people that don't have the option of getting into the kingdom? Yeah, and that's a good question. That's the debate that happens. I mean, uh, Miles Monroe said, your destiny is chosen by God. This is talking about everybody, okay? Your destiny is chosen by God. Your future is certain. Whether you arrive there is up to you. And so your future is certain. You're going one way or the other. Either you're going to hell for all eternity or you're going to be in heaven for all eternity. That is the certainty. And I know that people think, well, that just seems so harsh. You know, why would a good God just, you know, kill so many people? And that's a whole nother show that we will do. And we've talked about it many times on this show. But it's, it's, it's God is, here's what God is saying. It's not your job to save the person. It's my job. But it is your job to love the person. And it's your job to, to bring the kingdom of God to every single person that you have contact with. It's the Holy Spirit's job 
to move in that person's life. It's the Holy Spirit's job to to um, motivate or encourage them to ask you the question of this wisdom and this knowledge that you have that you've been given through Christ because he's chosen you. So you have extra wisdom. You have the king's knowledge. You have all of this power, all of this authority. And then it's your job to point them to the door. And then it's your job to help reveal to them the scripture that shows them how they can have what you have. It's the Holy Spirit's job to actually open the door. It's the Holy Spirit's job to allow them the grace to come in. But that, that's the thing. So we are still mm. to we are still to do God's work. We're still to bring God's kingdom. It's but He knows which ones because He's chosen. He knows which ones are going to have a broken and contrite spirit. He knows which one are going to come. Well, I don't know. Again, I don't want a God that I can completely understand because then He wouldn't be God. <laughs> but so here's how I kind of look at this. I mean, God already knows because He's outside of time too. So he already knows the decisions we're going to make because he's not he's not stuck in 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 that he created time he can't be stuck in it you know so uh, maybe I guess maybe that's how I I can wrap my brain around this whole concept uh, is by by looking at it that way that God is already outside of time he knows everything that's happened in the past everything that's going to happen in the future uh, because he's not tied into this construct called time that that he created so. well yeah ephesians 1 4 says god chose us in christ before the foundation of the world so before ever the world was created he already knew, he already knew. what was going to happen <laughs> i know it's hard to understand it's like you know because people say well what's the point of evangelism what's the point of even telling uh your story or your faith if if god's going to choose him or not i mean why i mean he's i mean let's just face it god doesn't need us that's right. I mean, there's there's people there's people's testimony that I've heard where they were at the end of the rope and and the spirit of God came fresh upon them, and and it changed their life inside. And it had nothing to do. No one told them anything. It was it was a supernatural experience that happened, and their lives was so changed by it. And so God doesn't need us, but He chooses to use us. And the reason why He chooses to use us, I was I was I was telling this story to you before. Imagine the worst case scenario. Imagine that uh, America or the world is under communism. Imagine that we have to be for into forced labor camps. Imagine that we have no voice or on ourselves. We have to do a certain job. Imagine that we're going to be beaten and that we're going to have all of these, these things take place. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, we still have peace. We still have joy. We still have goodness because in Christ, it supersedes all of that. We can now love our brethren. We can now love the people. We can now work unto God. We're not working under the communist government. We're working under God. We're working to please him because we're quick kingdom dwellers. We're loving those people around us. And all of a sudden, you know, that, that guard that just beat you or the, the law that puts you in prison, you're still loving those people. You're still helping those people. You're still bringing joy to those people because that's what's inside of you. It's a kingdom. It's a change. It's a transformation. You don't look at the world the same way everybody else looks at. You look at it as, hey, I'm just passing time. You know, as Jesus said in John 17, they're not of this world. One day I will be with God for eternity in heaven. But while I'm here, I have an opportunity to be able to be a light to the darkness, to be able to put on the new clothes, the new garments, and be kind, and to be long-suffering, to be filled with joy, to be you know gentle, all of that. I can do that because of Jesus, because I'm now a kingdom. And so just that's that's kind of, you know, awesome. So we're motivated every morning to do the right thing because God's grace allows us to do that because we've been given a different set of clothes. We've been given a different set of way of living because our life now is so much more full as it says in the Bible, the fullness of Christ. We have the fullness of Jesus dwell within us. It's so much better. That's really good, Pete. Yeah. That kind of leads right into our second motivation. Yeah. Um, the second one is peace, the peace we have in Christ. And verse 15 says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Yeah, I mean, again, that goes back to that illustration I just gave. So if the worst case scenario is we have no freedom, no rights to ourselves we still can have peace. 
I mean, it's just it's just mind boggling because I'm not living to please myself. I'm not living to please other people. I'm living to glorify God now. I now have new garments. I now have a new purpose. I'm now living to love people as Christ so taught us. I'm now living to a, a life that's 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 good, that's gentle, that's kind. And so no matter how much the people persecute me, no matter how much the world comes against me, I still can have peace because I'm not living according to the world's economy, according to the world's standard. I'm now living according to God's standards, God's economy. I'm now a royal. Yeah, it's like you're not living a life looking forward to one day being in the kingdom. You're living a life as if you're already living in the kingdom. That's it. That's it. Wow. Can't say it any better. So, I mean, um, in, in the verse, Paul turns the, the character to conduct. How can a Christian know when he is doing God's will? One answer is we know from this verse is that we will have the peace of God in our heart. When a believer loses his inner peace, he knows that he has some way disobeyed God's perfect will for them. I mean, that, you can't get it any better than that. If, you, if you're lacking peace in your life, you're disobeying God somewhere because in God's kingdom, as a royal, everything is taken care of. You, you don't have to worry about any of the problems of the world. God, Jesus says, I've overcome the world. Take heart. And, and so because he's overcome all the elements of the world, he says that we now can have perfect harmony and perfect peace, just letting him be God. Let him do what he's going to do. Let him take care of all of the problems of fears and worries. If, you, if you're lacking peace, it's because you're disobeying God somewhere. You're trying to control something. Thoughts? Yeah, that's really good. I mean, people ask, you know, all the time, how do you know if you're living in the will of God? Well, that's, that's how you know right there. That's if, the if very you've got first peace, step. Yeah. Um, the word translated rule is an athletic term. It means to preside at the games and distribute prizes. In Greek games, there were judges. We would call them empires, umpires today, but they would reject the contestants who are not qualified or those contestants that broke the rules. What Paul is letting his readers know is that God is our umpire and that he alone can give you peace in your heart if you choose to follow. Yeah, so again, it's, it's the reason why we don't have peace is because we're not letting God rule our life. You know, when we, when we come before God and we just say, God, I'm broken, I'm available to you. You know, as it says in Isaiah, Lord, here, me, here I am, send me. Lord, you know, he's always looking, who can I send? Who can I, who can represent us? Who can, you know, talking about God, who can, you know, bring the light to the world? And, and if we're saying, God, I, I want to do that. I, I want to be filled with this goodness that you're saying then God is ruling our life. And, and so that's what it's saying. We can now know that as he's ruling our life, we can now have peace. And, and we can have that in the deepest recesses, the deepest parts of our, our life. So how do we find peace? And, and again, in real life situation is, is when you have a circumstance that happens, uh, when life's, life hardships come in, just meditate on his word and his truth. Hmm. Worship him. Um, capture negative thoughts, meditate on what is true in the moment, you know, simplify your life. It's, it's stop trying to magnify the problem. Stop trying to magnify the negative aspect of it and start simplifying the positives and magnify those. You know, did you have a place to sleep this morning? Praise the Lord. Did you have something to eat this morning? Praise the Lord. Did your car start this morning? Praise the Lord. Did you have hot water this morning? Praise the Lord. You know, did you, do you have a husband and a spouse this morning? Praise the Lord. If you, did your kids say hello to you? Praise the Lord. Did you, were you able to walk this morning? Praise the Lord. Do you have 10 toes and 10 fingers? Praise the Lord. In everything, praise him. And when you stick and magnify your life and meditate on that, stay there all day, you'll get through everything and you'll find peace that surpasses all understanding. Wow. That's really good. All right. Let's jump on to uh, the third thing. Um, the third one is, uh, that should motivate us is God's word that magnifies Jesus. Mm. So verse 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Mm. Can you imagine if we did not have the words of Christ to help us live out our life? There are way Ooh. too many, there's too many chosen people by God that have never read God's word. 
I have, I, I have talking to so many people. I, I, I asked them, um, has God called you into the, has you accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and personal savior? And they've said, yes, I'm living for Christ. I love Jesus. I want to do by Jesus. And then I would ask him, are you reading God's word? And man, I would say that it's the highest percentage possible. They are mm. not reading God's word. Why? And, and that's the thing. And so here again, so what motivates me and, and so not only does God's grace motivate me to live for him because now I know that I'm a royal, not only, not only does God's peace, because I know that I, in this world, I'm going to face many trials and tribulations as James tells us, and there's going to be a lot of hardships, but not only do I, I, do I get motivated because now I know I can have the peace of God inside of me, but I'm also motivated because I have the word of God that helps give me the blueprint to live my life pl- uh, out perfectly before God. And, and again, Jesus lived his life perfectly, and he's given us a perfect example how to live this life here. And the only way that you get it is through the word of God. And so for me, that pumps me up. It motivates me. So when I wake up in the morning, I thank him. God, thank you for your grace and your mercy today because I deserve hell. But Lord, you've given me life. You've given me the new garments. Thank you, God, that in the midst of this storm and this trial that I'm going through right now, I can have peace knowing that you're working all things together for good for those who are called according to purpose, knowing that you are that you are in control of this kingdom and that I can have peace in this kingdom. And I thank you, God, that I can read your word and know more about you today. I thank you, God. I'm motivated to be able to just spend time with you and to learn more about you by reading God's word. Thoughts? Well, you know what I'm learning, Pete? The more that I read the word, the more I hunger for it. Mm. And I, I'm going through the book of Isaiah right now. And it's funny. I keep <laughs> in the margin. I've written several times in the last few days. Thank you, Jesus. Thank mm. you, Jesus. Where I mean, it's just pointing to Jesus constantly, mm. even in the Old Testament. Mm. So I have this friend I, I, I walk with every once in a while. And his his thing is like, oh, I'm an Old Testament guy. I'm an Old Testament guy. I'm like, well, that's fine. Jesus is all over the Old Testament. Uh, so just, man, just dive into the word. The more, if it, if you just, if it feels like a task for you, then so be it for, you know, but get in there. I'm telling you, the more you read the word, the more you're going to hunger for the word. You know, I we I meet with a, a couple and, and I'm looking for another couple now and praying about it, but we meet and it's just all we do is read the Bible. And uh, so we just open it up and we read our, our daily reading together and, and we just ca- help walk it through what it's saying. And, and I understand the frustration of, of not understanding what it's saying. I get that. And a lot of times you open it up like, ah, what the heck is it talking about? And you do have to do a little extra work to understand it. You know, you need to pray, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Um, but you at the same time, you need a commentary. So there's, com- we talked about this on a show a couple few weeks ago. You need a commentary. Um, you know, I would say Warren Wearsby is probably a really good commentary. There's some other really good ones out there. And then you would also need to have a translation that's a little bit easier. So I would, I would recommend the, uh, the NLT, the New Living Translation. It's, it's, it's a direct translation. It's not a paraphrase translation, meaning that it's kind of like a commentary translation. It's a direct translation that's in our no- common language today. Um, NLT, NLT is the New Living Translation. So I would recommend that. It's what's easier to understand. It's simpler. Um, and I would recommend getting a study Bible. And so if you get a study, Lifeway has really good study Bibles. Um, if you get a study Bible and then at the very bottom, it have a little bit of commentary. It'll give you cross references of where else that, that verse is set in the Bible. And so you can look at that cross reference and look at other parts to help you, to help it come alive. It also has maps in there. It also has different illustrations to help break down a thought. And so I would get a, a study Bible to help you. And so if you're just learning and you haven't got plugged in to read the Bible, do that. I mean, get those and then just start reading through. And there's so many Bible reading plans out there. You can download them online. Um, you know, if you need help, reach out to us. I got a few that we use. And there's one particular that I use very faithfully for the last 25 years. And, uh, and I've read through the Bible every year for the last 25 years. And it's, and it's, and it's something that I can't even function without reading. I, I got to have the whole Bible. I got to know it in context. And like you said, Bob, it's like when you have more of Jesus, all you want is more of him. Yeah. You have less, you can't, but that's it. So <clears throat> God's word 
is key. Let me just give context here real quick, though, before. Just, and, I, and again, we want to teach the full counsel of God. So let me give context so we can kind of understand what's being said. So Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns. So what's happening again, remember, if you guys have heard past podcasts, is there's false teachers that are coming against the Colossi church here. And they're trying to teach them man-made traditions, religious rules, human philosophies. And, and he's, he's basically, they're trying to say, listen, Jesus isn't, you don't have to have just Jesus to get in. You, you need to learn these other things that are not of Jesus. You need to try to learn these teachings and, and, and so forth to be able to help you succeed in life. And, and it's the same thing happening today. You know, there's, there's the five steps to successful living. There's the four steps to this. There's the two steps to that. And, and all of these things that, that, that they say, you must read this in order to have a better relationship. And I'm telling you, no. I'm telling you that the word of God is enough. The, the byproduct is as you get the word of God in you, he opens your eyes to other things, but it's not the other things that help your relationship. It's the word of God that helps your relationship. So it's, it's, it's not the word of the false teachers that brought salvation to the Colossians. It was the word of truth that brought the gospel to the Colossians. So first Peter one twenty two says it is in the, it is in the same word that gives us life and sustains and strengthens us. It is the word of God that gives us life. It is nothing else. If someone else is writing a book, that's their opinion, and that's what they've learned. That's not the Word of God. If someone else is writing another uh, devotional, because a lot, of, a lot of Christians read devotional, they don't read the Word of God, they might have a scripture in the devotional, and then they give it, but that's, you need more than that. You need the full counsel. You need everything. And so beware and be careful of other people trying to tell you that you need something other than the Word of God. You don't. And we've talked about this in the past as well on that. Another thing that Paul says here real quick is he says that singing psalms and, and hymns and spiritual songs. When I when we know the word of God, we we understand doctrine and and that is the the infallible truths. Those are the the things that we never we never get away from. You know that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day. Um, he died. You know it's His grace that we're saved. It, it has nothing to do with our works or anything like that. Those are doctrinal issues. And, and, and there's also theological things, which is our interpretation or our understanding of what Scripture says. But there's some hymns and some songs that are out there that we sing today that are not doctrinally correct. And so if you don't know the Word of God, how are you going to sing the right worship songs to give Him praise? Because He's wanting us to do that. And so that's why another reason why it's important to know the Bible in context so that you're not getting fooled. Um, and I'm not going to get into who some of that, but the more that you know the word, the more you'll start realizing like, well, that song isn't exactly right. And unfortunately, there's a lot of these worship people out there that are writing these songs that don't know the word of God. They know devotions, but they don't know the word of God. And if they knew the word of God in context, they would not be writing some of these songs. That's good, Pete. I mean, as, as we're learning and becoming, you know, learning the word of God more and more, the Holy Spirit's going to speak. And when you, and when you hear something that's not right, Red flags will go off in your in your spirit. You'll you'll know. You'll be like, whoa, 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 that's not quite right. Or, you know, you'll start you'll start identifying the lies and the and the false teaching and stuff like that. Whether it's, you know, whether it's words or or songs. I mean, it's all around us. There's false teaching all around us. But it, it, it's funny. It's like even if you go to like a business meeting, sure, and you're sitting there, all of a sudden your heart would be triggered. Like, well, what they're yeah. saying is not registering. Oh, exactly. I've had that happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's the same thing. It's like you'll get once you have the uh, word in you, the truth in you, everything that anybody else says that's not aligned with what the word says, it triggers you. That's right. That's right. And uh, Pete, I wanted to back up. You were talking about a study Bible, and I, I can tell you, I, I got my first study Bible about five years ago, and it made a huge difference. Difference, um, in helping me get through the word again we don't you don't want to take commentaries and start just reading commentaries unless they're pointing you to the word yeah. and th so that's why I want to get a good one and I haven't read this one or seen this one yet but I've heard it's amazing Tony Evans study Bible I've heard some really really good stuff on it so I don't know I haven't read it I'm Tony not, Evans the man I'm, I'm is not endorsing legend, so. it but I you know I 
I've I've heard a lot of his uh, a lot of his stuff and uh, some of the things I've we've used for men's studies and he's just he's you know he seems to be spot on on so much that uh, and the, some of the people that have told me that his study Bible is spot on I, I really trust so you might want to check that one if you're looking if you're looking for a good one maybe check that out you know Charles Spurgeon said that talking about the God's Word God, Charles Spurgeon said if if you cut John Bunyan open he would bleed Scripture. And and I and, and you know, John Bunyan wrote Pilgrim's Progress. So he was before Spurgeon. So he was he was the one of the patriarchs. And so you know obviously Bon Bunyan you know ministered to Charles Spurgeon, and and I'm just thinking, dang, I mean that's just something that that's my heart. I want to I want to bleed Scripture. I want everything that comes out of me that. John Stott is a uh, either a Scot or a uh, or Englishman, but he he wrote, "We must allow the Word of God to confront us, to disturb our security, to undermine our complacency, and to overthrow our patterns of thought and behavior." So, mm-hmm. thank you, God, for the Word of God that can help me unlearn all of those things that I had before I became a royal. Amen. You know, and so there it is. That's why it motivates me. All right, and the last part. All right, last one. The last motivation Paul gives us is the name of Jesus. Let me read verse 17 to you again. And it says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. I don't, I mean, it's like I, I get in bad problems or I don't have a clue what to do. I just say Jesus. Jesus, in, in Jesus' name, Jesus, 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 and I—I I mean, so I found myself in some of the most hardest crises in my life, just saying Jesus over and over and over and over again, because I just—I don't know what else to do. I just know that in that name, all things make sense. You know, in in modern society, we pay little attention to names. I mean, it's but in the ancient world, a name held significance. It was of the utmost report importance. I mean, it's like Eastern culture today is like, you know, you, um, like if I talk to my Eastern friends, I would say, Hey, you disrespected my name. You've brought shame to me and, and it's a shame society. And so that's the same thing back then. It's it, there was, you either brought honor or you brought shame by the name. So you're, mm-hmm. if you're representing your parent or your dad, you're going to bring them honor, not shame. Often during old Testament days, God changed a person's name because it's some important experience or, uh, or new development that happened in their life. Remember? So Jacob became Israel, yeah. right? So there was a change. Abram became Abraham, the father of many nations. And, um, and so that's what happened. Peter became Simon became Peter. Yeah. Simon or, or, uh, Cephas became Peter, right? Which is the rock. God changed that as Christians. We bear the name of Christ. The word Christian is found only three times in the entire new Testament. The name was given originally as a term of contempt, but gradually it became a name of honor. The name of Christ then means identification. We belong to Jesus. Amen. And so that member of three weeks ago, we talked about that we've been transfer, transferred into one from one kingdom to another. But as a royal, you're always a royal. I mean, that's it. When someone sees you, they see you as a royal. You are a royal priesthood. You are a perfect saint. You were you were elect. You were chosen. I mean, it's a big name. It's like when people come against you and they want to, they like bag on you. Oh, I can't believe you're a Christian. Oh, everything about you is bad. You're looking at them going, dude, I'm a royal. You're not. I'm like, I'm like chosen. I'm like, I have everything taken care of. I don't have the worries and the fears and the stresses of you. You're coming against me with, with all of your religion, all of your goodness. I come against you in the name of the Lord, my God, as David so said to Goliath. It's, it's, we, we have to see it in the right light. So don't let, don't be fearful of what man is going to say. They don't have the goods. You do. Right. They don't have all what it takes to get through life in a, in a good way. You do. And so don't let them come against you. And your confidence in that royalhood should be very attractive to them. They should want to say, hey, I want that. I want to be a royal too. That's it. I mean, it's like, and in, in, as it, we get, his name means authority. Yes. It's something that's, it's, you know, there's power in that. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's good, Pete. I mean, because, you know, when you sign your name to a check, it authorizes somebody else to withdraw money from a bank. And I love the fact that the, as a president signs a bill, that's what makes it law. That's it. it his, the authority. That's it. Well, we have a higher, much higher authority in, in Jesus' name. So, Wait, so we are, so I am, I am blood bought and I'm forgiven. Amen. And so it's in the name of Jesus that I am who I am. 
It is, it's not in my own self-worth. It's not in my own self-worth or efforts. It's only by what Jesus did. Amen. It's only by his grace. And because of that grace, I have peace. And because of that peace, I aim, I'm able to live out a life that is, that is good with a, with, a, with positive results that are uh, um, next level. And we get that from the word of God. And it's only because of Jesus. And so today's show is, is, is pretty amazing. I mean, it's, it, you know, John Newton said that how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, it heals his wounds, and it drives away his fear. You know, Blaise Pasco said, not only do we not know God except through Jesus Christ, we do not even know ourselves except through Jesus Christ. Wow. Think about it. Wow. Tim Keller said, Jesus took the tree of death so that you could have the tree of life. Think about it. So we have life because of Jesus. Tim Keller also says, as many have learned and later taught, you don't realize Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. Think about it. So you're at the end of your ropes. And if you want to have change, just, change, just say Jesus. If, you, if, you, if you're at the end of your life and you, just, you can't see hope anymore, just cry out Jesus. And, and don't stop until, until, you, until Jesus opens that door. He's standing, he's knocking, just keep saying Jesus. Henry Ironsign says, Jesus Christ is not a problem. He is the solution to every problem for life, for death, and for eternity. And if there's anybody that's listening here today and you've heard this and 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 this has touched your life and, and you're hearing this, you know, and, and maybe you're you're not living the best kingdom life you can. Maybe there's, maybe you haven't read the your word like you should, or maybe you still have some of the old garments on, and you and you're still living as you were when you were in the world, and you're not living as your kingdom dweller. You know, maybe you're a a, a royal, but you're you're the redheaded stepchild. Is that bad? Or you're a you're you're living a life that's not you know that good i mean you're not bringing honor to to jesus's name you're you're bringing shame your actions are bringing shame and and you don't have to keep doing that it's not that god's kicking you out he's not kicking you out of the kingdom you're still in the kingdom his grace covers the multitude of sins thank you jesus for that but but he does desire for you to live a life that's different he wants you to put on the new garments he wants you to to be in his word, to know him. He wants you to cry out to him and, and call his name. And, and if you need to repent of your sins, you can do it now. And you can just pray in your heart, Lord, I just pray that you would help me to change from my ways. I pray that you would continually teach me as I read your word um, to, to live out a life that's holy and pleasing for you. I pray, God, that you would help me have eyes to see and ears to hear, to see that you're at work in everything around me. Lord, that forgive me, Lord, for, for dwelling upon my own flesh and my own sin. Forgive me for trying to figure out my next steps. You're in control. Lord, help me to cast my cares and my burdens unto you. Help me to live peacefully to you. Help me to be motivated every day to walk your way. And if, if, there, if you're listening to this and you haven't given your life to the Lord and you just completely haven't surrendered everything, Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And, and if you haven't done that or you're just not sure if you've done that, you can do that today. You can turn right now. You can change your course. You can say, God, I want to enter into the royal kingdom. I want to enter in to be a part of what you have. I want you to take care of my problems. I want you to put the new garments on me because I can't do it anymore. Lord, I've messed this life up. And that's what he's looking for. He's just looking for your broken and contrite spirit. He's not looking for your works. He's not looking for how good you are or how, much, how many gifts you have. He can care less about that. He just wants you to be available to him. And if that's you, just cry out and say, God, I want to be available to you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of trying to do it my way. Lord, I want to repent. I want to follow you. I want to learn about you. I want to grow in your kingdom. I want you to be my God. I don't want to be my God anymore. I want to be you. I want you to be it. And so forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. And if that's you and you gave your life to the Lord, we would just absolutely love to hear from you. You can go on to riotpodcast.co co and at the top it has a, a button that says no god click on that go down and say i give my life to the lord and fill out that sheet and we would love to get in contact with you and reach out to you and 
help you with your next steps. If you need a church, we can point you in the right direction. If you need prayer, we can pray with you. If you uh, need help on on learning the Bible or what to uh, what to read, we can get that for you as well. Just reach out to us. We are always available, and we do answer our texts. We do. Uh, if you find us on Facebook or, or or Instagram, we will connect back to you. And uh, Bob, how can we do that? That's good stuff, Pete. Yeah, uh, like Pete said, our website is riotpodcast.co.co. You can also find us at the Riot Podcast on YouTube. Make sure if you're on YouTube watching us there to subscribe and to click the alert button so that you get notified every Thursday when the new episode gets released. Um, on Facebook, make sure that you click like and share it with your friends and and comment. You know, tell us where you're wa- watching from or listening from, and and uh, you know all that good stuff. And share anything else that's on your heart or something that touched you on the podcast. Or if there's if there's a topic that you would like uh, for us to discuss in the future, man, we get a lot of our show ideas from you guys. Yeah. So feel free to you know put something in the comments there that uh, you'd like us to 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 maybe address in the future and. And on Twitter, you can always use our, our, our tagline, hashtag Riot Podcast, and do that on Facebook as well. So just uh, just a way for us to make sure we catch it and connect to it. But uh, Pete, been an amazing show. Always fun. I love getting, uh, I love our Tuesdays and recording with you. And uh, our, pre, our pre-show is always a special time. And uh, I just, I pray that uh, this is, this has helped somebody out there today. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and again, we, I do pray. I go through and look at a lot of our people that follow us and I start, I pray for them and I look at um, some of the comments and I pray. Yeah. Um, it's, it, there is, I mean, the Bible says that a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so we are praying for you and I pray that you too pray for us as, uh, yes, please. you know, we're getting that message out there and there's an enemy that does not want us to get that message out there. And That's so right. Keep us in prayer as well. We love you guys. Be blessed. Love you guys. Have a great week of worship. This has been the Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of the Riot Podcast.